Namaste. So a lot of people are talking about depression nowadays. You know, depression and suicide actually is way up, especially in the U.S., looking at the statistics online the other day. And people are going crazy. They're killing themselves. I mean, that's like the most desperate act there is. So why are people getting so hung up about this depression? Now, what is depression? First of all, depression is thinking that I have to play a game that I can't win. Depression is having a problem that I can't solve. Depression is thinking that I'll never be able to satisfy my desires. Now, what do all these things have in common? Number one, they're thoughts. And number two, their desires. So now, who determines what we think and what we desire? <laughs> See, <laughs> I think these are all symptoms of not taking ownership and not taking responsibility and not having a discipline over one's mind, isn't it? I mean, who is getting depressed anyway? It's you, isn't it? And whose mind is that that's full of those thoughts and desires? It's yours, right? So who's the only one who can do anything about it? You. So what can you do about it? Well, first of all, let's look at what depression is. Depression is a set of circumstances and an interpretation of those circumstances. And the set of circumstances is generally, like I said, being in a game that you can't win or having a desire you can't satisfy. So what happens uh, this is the radical point of view. What happens if you don't interpret it through the normal lens or the normal filter that we've been conditioned to having by school, by society, by the media, by advertisements and corporations and so on? What happens if we don't look at it as a problem that I have what if we look at it as a problem that the society creates? A desire that the society creates or that people around us create. See, I, I got to grow up in a dysfunctional household. And in my household, my mother and indirectly myself were blamed for all the problems in that household. Whatever problem there was, whatever went wrong, whatever didn't go right or whatever, was blamed on her. And it was a deliberate program to drive her mad so that she could be declared insane and hospitalized and thereby lose the legal standing to challenge my grandmother's will. They pulled a number on me, too, but it wasn't quite as bad. They had me adopted by my own grandma, which in that state of New Jersey at that time meant that I was ineligible to contest her will as an adopted child. See, this is crazy. This is nuts. But it threw my mother and indirectly me into a severe depression. Why? Because we had a problem that we couldn't solve because the problem as stated was false. The problem as stated was you are crazy. 
you are the cause of all these problems, my mother. Huh? But the actual problem was the family was so cruel and so incredibly greedy that they mounted a, a generation-long program of propaganda to drive my mother crazy. And guess what? They didn't succeed. <laughs> they got her committed. But after being in a state hospital for several years, the doctor said, there's nothing wrong with this lady. They couldn't diagnose her. <laughs> so, see, the actual problem was the greediness and lack of ethics of the family. But the problem was being misstated. And so, of course, it was insoluble as stated. So I would suggest the same thing is true of depression. Depression, as stated, is you have a problem you can't solve. But the actual problem is that society has become so unethical and so uncaring and so cruel and so greedy that the people at the top are misusing their power to exploit the people at the bottom. I just read today in the news that 50 people in the United States have as much wealth as the rest of everybody else combined. Now that's messed up. That's, that's the kind of thing that happens just before a revolution. Huh? Look at the French Revolution as a perfect example or the Bolshevik Revolution as another good example. Uh, or the American Revolution, for that matter. People got tired of being exploited economically, so they got together and kicked out the elites. It's happened again and again and again in human history. Because why? The, the elites are saying, it's your problem, you can't pay your rent. But no, the problem is that you have to pay rent to begin with. See? It's, the problem is not that you can't find a job. The problem is that the elites have taken all the wealth and control all the money flows, and they only give it to people who serve them like a slave, like a serf. Huh? So the real problem is not that you can't get laid. The real problem is that women have become so entitled that they won't accept anything but a perfect man and such a thing doesn't exist, so. See, the real problem is not that you're depressed. The real problem is that you, your intuitive wisdom has seen that you're trying to play in an unfair situation. You're in an unfair situation, so why bother? You can't win, so why even play the game? You can't get your desire, huh? The game is stacked against you. So why even bother? Why even get started if you know you're going to lose? You know that this body is going to die. So why even get started trying to pile up a bunch of possessions and powers and titles and <laughs> designations and stuff, huh? knowing that you're going to lose it all at the end? See, this is actually quite sane. This is, this is actually <laughs> more realistic. I think there was a study done a few years back I haven't seen it. I looked it up one time. I found it on the internet. That people with so-called depression are more realistic in their view of the world than people who don't have depression. People who don't have depression are living a dream. They have false hope. Huh? They've been watching Disney movies too much. When you wish upon a star, bullshit. 
No, there, there are games that are created from the beginning to make you lose, like a casino or like the racetrack, any kind of betting game. The odds are always against the customer, isn't it? So why even start? It, the same choice is not to get involved, to pass. So, actually, what we call depression is simply looking at a phenomenon of crazy making with an incorrect view, thinking that, oh, it's my fault that I can't win. It's my fault that I can't get what I want. No, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And when you realize that, and you drop that whole view and you instead view it that the context is crazy, not you. The society is crazy. The family is crazy. The corporations are crazy, not you. You're fine. You're not willing to play that game. That's the right choice because you can't win. So what is it actually? What is going on? What is this so-called depression? It's really desirelessness. It's really going at, well, this human life is very short and it's full of all kinds of suffering. And at the end, everything fails and you lose it all anyway. <laughs> so why even bother to do more than the minimum necessary to maintain my life and attain enlightenment because that's the real purpose of this life see that's another reason people get depressed they're playing the wrong game they're playing the game of accumulating possessions when they really should be playing the game of enlightenment and solving all the problems at one stroke and what is that one stroke desirelessness Ramana Maharshi one time said, the greatest emperor in the world is a beggar compared to one who has no desires. <laughs> Why? Because the emperor is the slave of his own desires. To have more and more territory, to have more and more wealth, more and more subjects and so on. He's a slave to his own greed and he's suffering like anything. There's always some upstart trying to take his empire away from him. So he's a, he's a mess, he's suffering. But the man who has no desires is free. Alexander the Great one time wanted to know who is the wisest man in my empire. Huh? And they said, what was the name of that Greek sage? Uh, I can't remember his name right now. <laughs> but anyway, he went to see this sage and the sage is sitting naked by the river. Huh? And Alexander comes, you know, with his big armor and his big sword and his big crown and all. And he says, I am Alexander the emperor of the Western world or whatever. And the sage just said, um, would you move a little bit? You're in the, in the way of my son, you know. I'm trying to take a sun bath here. And just, just move a little bit over, okay? And of course, Alexander was flabbergasted. Who is this guy <laughs> who I could kill or crush in a moment? Huh? And he's telling me to get out, of the, get out of the way of his sunlight. Well, that's a sage. That's an enlightened one. He has no desires. He doesn't care what happens. Whatever happens, he knows he's going to be fine. Because he's not this body. He's not this mind. He's not even this consciousness. He's something completely beyond that. And to be 
so desireless is actually the aim of life and the perfection of life and actually the greatest happiness. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.